Hey everyone, welcome to the Handlebar Workshops. I'm Tony and today we're in the Garage Workshop. Today we're working on Christmas gifts. Uh, I call these the birdhouse wine holders. You can see they kind of look like a birdhouse here. Then it flips around you can hold more wine this way. You could also put wine bottles through these three holes. So now I'm going to get started and pretend I'm Santa's little helper. So this presentation box is going to have three circles on it that you're going to be able to put your wine in. And your wine will also sit behind it, so I need to make it tall enough to go over the wine bottle and wide enough for the three and a half inch hole saw that I'm going to be using for those circles, and then some for the sides. So we're talking at least four and a half, five inches. Now the bare minimum we need is three and an eighth inch for this. I'm using a three and a half inch hole saw. We should be good. So what I'm going to use for this is cherry that's exactly one half inch thick. All right, so I kind of have it drawn out here. One of the main things you got to worry about is it's got to be what, high enough, tall enough, and thick enough for the wine bottle to fit in there. And I'm going to be having the half inch cherry as a inside here, and inside here, and inside the bottom here. So I need to make some room from here, but I also want a clasp to come down here as well. So between that bottom circle and the bottom of the box, I need enough room for that. I need enough room between these so they don't break very easily. And then this gives me enough room. I can probably go with a taller bottle than this if I need to. And now for some tips on making things a little easier. What I did was I marked a center hole and measured an inch and three quarters to one side and then poked another hole in there. So now the pointer part of my compass and the pencil part of my compass can both set in there nicely and I'll always be able to repeat that measurement. Then I did a very similar type of thing here where I marked this center here and then I did uh, two and a quarter inches to each side and poked holes in there. So now my dividers will always fall right into those holes and I can repeat that no matter how many times I want to do this. Now with the dividers I can mark my center line of my box which is also the center of this hole in this case take my pencil and put the lead in that little hole and it registers quite nicely in there. Then I can take my square and I can butt it right up against there and tighten up the nut here. Now I can go anywhere and mark my center lines on my drawing. So now I can start to get the cutting. Um, we're just worried about the fronts and the backs which are going to be identical. We're going to need four of them for two boxes. In a similar way to the ones up here, I set out a, uh, a three inch and a four inch span here for my dividers. So I'm on the three inch right now, which is the distance from the tip down to the first uh, circle. And I'm going to use my square to give myself the distance to the center here. All right, so there's my first mark. So I don't have to go set this back and forth all the time. I'm going to go through and do the other three. Now I can come back and set this to four inches. And I can drop two more here at four inches each. Now I have all three holes for my circles. Now with the holes cut out and then standing on the inside, because it's easier to do it at this point, I'm going to start gluing this together. I cut the 45s on the sides on my router table instead of my table saw because it's easier to set up my router table than it is for my old table saw. 45 has got to follow this. So this is the outside and this is the inside. So I'm going to put glue along here. Now Make sure I keep these at a perfect 90 degree angle. I'm going to clamp these to my blocks. 
And now I'll line up this 45 cut with this one here. Now I can just let that dry and then come back and do the back. I'm getting ready to cut the bottom of the wine holders three and a half inches square. It's slightly oversized, which is really actually a good idea because we're not going to put this in right away. We're going to cut this in half first. I'm going to cut this in half first because that way it's easier to glue the end piece in. I can get a clamp on it and then I don't have to flip it, keep flipping it over to do the tops and the bottoms. I can just do one on each side and it's done. Looking at the bottom, you can see the grain running this way. So that means on this edge and this edge, we have long grain and we got end grain on these edges. Glue doesn't work so good on end grain because it just kind of sucks it in and absorbs it in there and it doesn't really stay where it needs to stay in order to dry properly. So long grain like this to the long grain like this is where it would work best. So if this glue joint here isn't so good, having these nice strong glue joints here will prevent this from wobbling back and forth like that. So you can see here that they're both the same height, which is good. You cut everything straight in half. I had a little problem with this one. You can see there's a bit of a step here. That's because these, I guess, were a little sanded a little wobbly here. So when I ran them along the fence, it didn't quite cut straight. So now i got to figure out how to make this so it clamps together and makes a nice seam. So I'm going to put a ruler across here, just draw a line, Oops. and that one goes back there, I'm going to mark a little V in here as well, and then do the same on this side. Now I can just cut almost to that line, and then I can sneak up on the cut so everything closes up nicely. Alright, so now that we got the roof part all cut, beveled, and engraved, we're ready to glue it on to the top of the container here. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you may know that gluing end grain onto long grain is not going to be a very good bond. I'll still put some on there just to kind of help it hold, but I've cut these little pieces here to act as cleats that'll go on up here and like that. So that way we get all long grain glued the long grain. That's a much better hold. So I'm going to add some small hinges to the top here. I have the smallest bit that I have in my drill. I'm not going to go in too far, just enough to, for the screw to grab and drive itself in. Instead of drilling it square with the roof here, I actually tilted it up slightly so that way the screw would not poke out the other side.
Now these are not my own design. I saw pictures of these on the internet, but I decided to make them look more like birdhouses and use uh, metal hinges at the top here rather than a wooden hinge. So here they are, all wrapped and ready to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.